will know you are not waiting. Because the only thing that will be left in your life is God. When they shake you, there will be nothing of yourself again. When men clap for you, you are quick to stop them and direct them and say, look, the secret behind everything you see is this God. And you are not just doing some spirituality. It is true. You have learned by experience and through your pain that any man minus God is a failure. It's a matter of time. It's a matter of time. Hallelujah. Two things you get when you truly wait. Let's wrap up with it. 31. They that wait upon the Lord, the first thing that happens to them is their strength is renewed. What is your strength? The fuel that moves you to your path of destiny. No car runs without fuel. Whether it's a Rolls Royce, a Bentley, Toyota, Mercedes, whatever it is, no matter how nice and new the car is, it cannot move itself. There is fuel that must be put in the tank and then it can move. So the first thing that happens to you is that supply of fuel by the Spirit comes upon you. And now you can make progress and advance. The second thing that happens to you is that you shall mount up with wings. Hallelujah. Mount up with wings as the eagles. The Bible says as a result. You know what it means to mount up with wings? God elevates you above the realm of all the things that kept you down. You mount up with wings in the similitude of the eagle. The Bible says, you shall run. But when you use this formula, when many people are weary, you are still moving. And people will say, I know that ordinarily people should be tired. But it looks like you never get tired. Every time I meet you, you are on fire. Every time I meet you, is one testimony of God's grace. What is it about you? Don't you cry? Don't you weep? Don't you go through disappointment? Is it that you don't weep? Why don't you look weep and you tell, you tell them I found a formula? The formula is I don't have to wait until my strength fails. I have positioned myself permanently that he is the source of my strength. So when the pride of men will fail them, when the connections of men fail them, Already you have declared to God, I don't want to wait until my experience teaches me a lesson. You are my God and you are my King. Yes, I thank you. I went for the course and I came back as the best officer. I thank you. I have a certificate that is good. I thank you. I, you have given me intellect. I have all kinds of recommendations by my superiors. But Lord, I do not place my faith in those things. I return back to you. And if ever I am lifted, I know you are the reason behind me. And God says, this was everything I wanted. If you come to a place where you acknowledge me above all these things, then a revival has truly happened to you. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5. We're about to pray. Trust in the Lord, it says, with all your heart, not some of your heart, and lean not unto your own understanding. Man as a species is a proud species. We usually, it takes a lot to break the pride of man. To bring us to a point where we acknowledge that there is an authority above us. So he tells you in advance to trust in the Lord with all your heart. He says to not lean on your own understanding. The next verse is very instructive. Let this be our key word for tonight. In all your ways, Acknowledge to acknowledge means to place priority upon to acknowledge means to accept that outside of his influence you cannot move forward. That's what it means to acknowledge.
saying, Lord, through the pain and through everything I've gone through, I repent of my pride. I repent of believing that by my own strength I can make it. Now I'm not ashamed to declare before you. If you do not help me, I cannot rise. If you do not stand, whichever position is comfortable for you. But please meet it with God. Your outside, those outside, make sure you are praying. from the depth of your heart.
For that person, the Lord is bringing a mighty deliverance for your family. This is what I am saying. Marvelous deliverance for your family. In the name of Jesus. Now I speak over every dead prayer life here. Whatever has killed your prayer life and your passion for the things of God, I command a revival now. Whatever has eroded your passion for the world, your passion for the word of God, in the name of Jesus, I command that it must give way now. Some of you, before tomorrow's session, you will return in testimonies of such things. And so many of you hear me, you will go back home and sleep this night and the blueprint of your destiny will be open. In the name of Jesus Christ. As a result of this conference, we release the ministry of angels. And we declare that these angels will go with you and they will see to it that anything that is not of God, let it live your life right now. Now please let me make a personal request. I apologize for the time. Tomorrow, if you can and if the officials allow, I want everyone to write a list of what you are tired of in your life. That must leave your destiny. Please do it for yourself. Call your loved ones. They can write and send it. I like to bring it here. I'm going to be laying hands on it. Let's see the God. Whether, whether Satan is not able to let your destiny go. I assure you, by the God of heaven, whatever has held you and caused you pain and has dampened your spiritual life, whether it's a financial issue, whether it's a relational issue, it's a health issue, tomorrow we'll have the time to pray for the sick and also to minister deliverance. But please do well to come with your prayer requests. Maybe before we even arrive, we can just collate them and then we are going to pray over them here and then we'll pray and speak over the people. But I pray for you, may the Lord bless you. Amen. This revival that has started in your life will not come to an end. The Lord bless you. The God of Jacob defend you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Jesus. Let's share the grace of the promise. The grace of our Lord Jesus 